Ben Tankor's injury rocked us last week. It really did. Out for the remainder of the season, potentially the start of next season as well. But every time Pape Matassar has stepped in recently, he's played really, really well. And best performance coming against AC Milan, which uh, me and Sim were saying it looked like a bit of a coming of age performance um, in the San Siro. Uh, we'll start with you, Sean. Do you think Pape Matassar can fill that void for the remainder of the season? Yeah, listen, I was, I'm sure like everybody else, pumped uh, by the fact that both of them stepped up. I did a video called like Carpe Diem that was about those two. Would they seize the moment? Would they handle the pressure? I think both of them, him and Oli Skip, I think Oli Skip maybe flew under the radar or flew under the, you know, was in the kind of shadow of Sar a little bit on the, um, on the, on the night. But both of them, I thought, were very accomplished performances in, on the biggest stage. Uh, look, they're still... You know, one of them's 20, one of them's 21, I think. So yeah. I don't expect them to be able to do that every week. You know, um, there's going to be moments where they have bad performances or make mistakes. I think it's important that the, the fans give them the right amount of support, give them the right amount of patience and let them kind of mature in their own right. But I think it definitely lightens the load a little bit. Like going into the Milan game, I was terrified around what might happen. If they didn't, if they crumbled under the pressure then we were in for a really tough, and we still, we still might be, but we it was looking pretty bleak with just having Hoiberg back going forward. Uh, now I feel a little bit more relieved that actually you've got Oli Skip and Saar and Hoiberg and all three of them can are, are capable and, and can you know maybe sort of be the boon that we need to get through this tough extended period. So look, I'm, I'm blown away by how good Saar was especially. Um, don't want to take any credit away from Skip, though. I think they did different jobs on the night. Both of them did it, did their, did their thing very well. But yeah, in Pape Sar, I think we have got a, a special, a special player who, if he continues on his progress in the right form, then then yeah, it's, it's a. And a, a, you've got to give credit to Fabio Paratici for that one, right? He gets a lot of um, lot of uh, hard um, opinions thrown at him for the amount of unsuccessful talents that he's bought and overpaid for. Um, for certain players, but with Saar, I think he paid, was it 10 million quid? You know, yeah, I think it was like 15, 16 or something like that, but yeah. Oh, was it? 15, 16, okay. But look, you know, at 19, 20 years old, he could he could become an absolute an absolute beast for us. So yeah, good, good, good positive things to come from him. Hmm. Uh, Brains? Yeah, I thought that performance was incredible. Like, in relation to Benton Kerr, like, obviously, I don't think he has Benton Kerr's like vision and movement going forward, but he's better than Benton Kerr going backwards. He's a better defender than Benton Kerr. Like his his um, his uh, his his length of his like uh, running span, like his leg span is is vast. And, I, and actually, I don't think there's any midfielder at the club who's as good a defender as Sar. I think he's the best defender at the club from the midfield. Like. Um, uh, we haven't really seen how I think actually we've seen little spots of him progressing the ball and going forward and actually he looks quite menacing he's a little bit more erratic but and his shots he's he's he snatched at shots some the one shot he had in Milan he, the, the field opened up he actually could have run with that for quite some time and shot he, he shot it early um but I think as soon as one flies in from him I think he's going to score more because I think it will just settle him down he'll pull the trigger at the right time rather than rushing um but you can see the good thing when a, when a player snatches at shots one thing you can see is that he wants to shoot he wants to score he wants to progress the game um so I I actually like Sar so much like everything I've seen from him just um even his little fighting with off the ball like what like the fouls he gives away are, are are not mean they're just like he just he just wants to harass the ball away from you all that stuff i just love about him there was a defensive block he made where the, the attacker i don't know if it was Lau um or Tenali, but they had got they were so far ahead of him and he made the space back and put the block in and then he ran and got the ball and recovered it and and progressed the game i'm thinking like that is we haven't really seen that from anyone at the club maybe not from uh, for a while from Hoiberg Hoiberg used to do that right run all the way back and then make a block but I think Sar's got something great so I actually think Sar is a, a is a benefit um the difficulty with losing Bentecourt is that vision and like the the clever thinking and the drop of the shoulder and turn and the whole game is now going that way um no we don't have that and that's a massive loss because the amount of goals are goal eventualities came from him doing that but the thing is 
Skip, I actually think in the Milan game, Skip was sold out quite heavily by um, Kulu and uh, Son and Kane. Their touches were so bad, and his probably um, his kind of uh, pass ratios probably got affected. But I thought he was really good at progressing the game. I thought, yeah. and like after the first few times, like he he got he was a little rash, but then he made this kind of slide tackle to recover. And I can you could almost see him. It was like that video game, the power up button. He was like. Like <laughs> in power, and it was like, man, he's just like manned up. You can see visually he's manned up, you know. And he started to press the game. I was like really worried about Skip, um, but the way he played in that Milan game, and I think also we have to understand that Milan are not really Milan. They're 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 kind of tied in in third place on goal difference, but they've been a shaky team for a mm -hmm. little bit now, you know. Um, since the World Cup, at least, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Since the World Cup, so. But I still think in that level, you know, he, his, his nerves just could have got the best of him. He, they didn't at all. I thought him and I thought Sarah and Skip controlled the game. I was so impressed with the fact that we we didn't look like we were we were a bad midfield team. We didn't look like we were being overrun. Mm. They looked long. They actually looked like the two more senior, stronger midfielders in in the battle, which was kind of mind blowing to me, you know, because they're they're playing quite seasoned professionals. So. So I'm I'm quite excited about that. It's kind of almost a bit of a weird one. It's like who like I definitely think you probably it's like who do you who do you switch out? You know, like do you Saar play comes in Saar comes in for, Hoy, uh, for for Benson Core ahead of Skip, I think, but it's nice to know that Skippy still capable. I mean like who when when Hoybear comes back in, is it Hoybear and Saar? Yeah. And then you just put Hoybear in the attacking? Because I, I think Saar is better defensively. So but the Hoybear is normally the one who's progressing from the back. So um, I think you let Saar do that and you put Hoybear, because like, Hoybear's got goals this season. He's actually a, a clinical finisher yeah. of the ball. So and uh, so that's what you would do. But I actually don't think it's, uh, it's, it's, it's too bad. This could just be the moment for Skip to actually come in and get a run, you know, and like he, he'll probably play every game now. He'll be an alternate, even if he doesn't start, and he will play a, a, every game. So um, it's a good chance for Skip to like finally kick on like he was, he was going to in the past, you know. Hmm. Yeah, a bit of a problem I have um, with Saar against Bentancur is we've won a lot of goals this season by, you know, pressing high up the pitch with Bentancur being really good at that, you know, being the furthest man mm -hmm. forward, really pressing the other team's defence yeah. into submission a little bit. And I haven't seen Saar do that as of yet. I mean, he's very good at pressurising the other team's midfield in the middle of the park, but we haven't seen him go yeah. all the way up the pitch and really start pressing the opposition. So I want to see a bit more of that from Saar if we're really going to kick well, on this season. More pivot. Isn't he? He's yeah, the I know, I know, I know. But we didn't really have anyone to do that in Milan. Mm, I think if you if you if you put if you switched it, he would be quite uh, quite with his leg span. I think he would win a lot mm. of balls, you know, in their third. I think we uh, that would his be a leg great span tactic. is insane. He's like a daddy long legs. Yeah, it's yeah, it's crazy. It's absolutely mad. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he was he was his... he can cover. It, and, as you're, and there was like a moment, I think it was like with like 15 minutes or 10 minutes to go, he like goes on this mad lung busting run down the right hand side, like with all this energy. I'm like, how is he still running at full pelt? Like yeah, yeah, was, yeah. was so, so late in the game. He seems to have incredible uh, stamina as well as everything else. I think he made five tackles throughout the game as well. Um, I actually, but for me, it was more his, his composure on the ball was absolutely yeah. phenomenal. Yeah. I thought he was, it was excellent for a player of his age. He wasn't scared about pl players coming to pressurize him. He was willing to hold them off um it, most of his passes were simple but when he did have switches to play they were usually, usually very accurate and, uh, and yeah. as brain said that uh, he had confidence to drive into space and actually to have a couple of shots of goal as well wasn't afraid to um um to have a go dig out dig out effort so it's absolutely fantastic look and but for all the praise um we're giving Saar, and rightfully so the question was can Saar fill the benton call void and that's a big question because the, the, I'm not not uh, not to uh, um, downplay how good Saar was, but Bentancur, the level he was showing, especially before the World Cup, and maybe maybe not yeah. so much after the World Cup when he came back, but definitely before the World Cup, the level he was showing, he was probably one of the best centre mids in the league for about a couple of months, in my yeah. opinion. And that's how, how, yeah, that's how high his level was. Not just uh, he's uh, also had a couple of bad games though. He, like against against Fulham, he wasn't spectacular. I'm saying I'm yeah. saying maybe against, not maybe not yeah. since the World Cup, World especially World for the Cup. couple yeah. months oh, right. before yeah. the World Cup. Um, yeah, yeah. he was showing yeah. an incredible level and the problem is like he was showing that kind of level and we were just about scraping games now mm. is Saar able going to be able to match that level that's a big question I, 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 
Like it's a big ask for him to do that. And I think he obviously is a young player with extreme potential and he showed that at the Santo how good he can be. But it's about getting a consistent... Like Benton Cole was consistently putting high level performances in week in, week out pretty much it seemed um, for a few months um, before yeah. the World Cup. Um, now is Saar going to be able to put in consistent week in week out performances to the level he was showing at the San Siro and probably to be honest my mind you have to be better than that um uh, 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 you know if we are going to really not miss that Benton call in the center obviously I I don't know I don't think so I think it's a big ask for him to do that I think when young players you gain you gain consistency with young players that's usually how it goes and they'll have some but great he, games he's been, he's been consistent though himself yeah but over, sh over short short amount game. of time yeah over short amount yeah. of time though you know, now he's going to literally going to be starting week, well, hopefully anyway, going to be starting week in, week out for the next, probably from now to the end of the season, um, considering our, our injuries. And it's whether he, we, I, do we really, do I really believe that we're going to see um, consist, that consistency every every game? It's going to be a big ask. So yeah. if Benton Core was still fit and the performances of the front line over the last two games continue to be as bad as they were or they as they have been, and it doesn't matter. We're not winning enough games with performances of Decky, Son, and mm -hmm. Harry Kane, who, yeah. for what it's worth, over the last two or three games, like there's a little bit of a template that's emerging of solid, you know, strong centre backs pressuring him. And if yeah. he doesn't get the protection from the referee from drawing fouls, then Tottenham falls apart a little bit with the creation of movement yeah. uh, from Harry Kane. If if Pape Sarr can put in 90% of the performance that he put in against Milan for the rest of the season and the other the three at the top whoever those three are can, can yeah. step onto another level or back mm -hmm. to the level that they were previously then we'll be just fine i don't think sar is the problem i think at the moment we need more from the guys at the top and we need more consistency from the guys at the back and if sar does that sort of performance if the other two areas have a bit more security and reassurance then i think we'll be just fine yeah i think, I think uh go on brian yeah, sorry go on, i was Brains. gonna say uh, I think it's about like the partnership of who he's partnered with. Like, say, like this season, Hoiber has actually been, I would say Hoiber has been better attacking than he's been at the back. He's been sometimes a bit of a liability for me. Like sometimes he just stops or he shuts off. Sometimes he hasn't been the extra layer of support. And I think we've, that's added to our defensive problems. Um, so I think if you have him on the front foot doing the kind of link play, he's obviously not as good. He's definitely not as good as Benton Kerr on that. Benton Kerr's feet are like kind of world class. But but Hoiber actually is an attacking threat. And the way he won that ball that then put in Kane for Kane's like record breaking goal, like that's what you get from Hoiber. So I think if it, if Hoiber comes in, I think Saar has to be the lower pivot because I, I just think he's he's stronger than than both Benton and Hoiber. So I think all of a sudden, our defense has a little bit of an extra layer of support. And then Hoiber is in a natural position where he, where he plays for, for Denmark, where he sets up goals, where he's in a, in a kind of moving box to box, but really a high pressing, um, progressing the game forward. So I think I think if that works, if, that, if that's the kind of matchup, then I think we've got a, something really positive. Yeah, it's funny you say that about Saar though, because I actually think his technique is really strong um, when it comes to like long, uh, like first of all, long range shooting and stuff. And I know I remember the World Cup when he came on for periods for Senegal, he was taking all their set pieces, all their corners and free kicks. Yeah. He was taking all of them and, and, and quite to a good, decent standard as well. So it would be yeah. interesting to see if he if he was to get more, a bit more freedom to um, um, be in the final third on occasion, uh, how he performs. Because I reckon, obviously he's still very young, but given a bit more uh, maybe responsibility to do that, I reckon it could prove dividends for us. Maybe not in the short term, but definitely over the long term. I reckon he could become there'll quite be opportunity. a... Yeah. There'll be opportunity for him to, for, to, do, to do it like a natural uh, double pivot. There'll be a chance to do that. But I think in the big games, um, it might be sensible to have Hoiber progressing and him just con just playing. like Because there was, there was a pass, there was a couple of passes he did that just blew my mind. For a player at his age, he did a, a reverse inside pass when he was playing, his shoulders are pointing this way, and he did a reverse cut pass, cut right through the field, and we were on the attack. And then our front players just sold him out again. But that pass there, it split the entire field in half. Like it, it you know, and I was like, wow, like 
that is an incredibly creative pass to do from he was kind of had players on him it was either pass the ball here and keep going back no he changed the direction of the game so i i saw like you're right i saw creativity in his feet not just like mm. a defensive machine i saw like he's actually you could put him in, in the attacking midfield role and he'd do all right but i think mm. it's it's the right time because what i kind of disagree as well like you know like a young player and i think it is in general, you're right. The the young players come in, they then start feeling a little bit, you know, complacent that they're in. They're no one, no one's going to take my side. No, we got no one. I think it's a little bit different with African nations uh, players. They're just built a little bit different. That actually, when you get them in, and you show them, you put arm around their shoulder, and you show them you got love, and that like, you're our guy, they start to kind of like build and build and build and get better and better. So I'm hoping that's what we see. But you know, until it happens, we don't know. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard to say if Saar can actually fill the void that Ben calls left because he was like such a big player for us this season. Like we say, one of the best players, if not the best player. But what it's definitely going to do, it's going to aid his development, Saar. It's going to be giving him invaluable experience playing week in, week out in the Premier League uh, for a team trying to fight for Champions League football as well. In the Champions League as well, um, getting invaluable experience. So um, I think it's going to do the world of wonders for his development. And can you see maybe if Saar does does do really well from now until the end of the season. Can he be um, fight his way into being our number one midfielder next season, maybe alongside a Ben Tancor? Brains. Yeah. yeah, I think he could get the eight shirt. Like, I think he could get the the, th the the way we wanted Basuma to come and play. Like, being be it that we don't really set up to play that way. Like, I think he could be that. You know, I've, everything that I've seen in him so far, just the time, the the, the, the kind of composure on the ball. Like just the the strength that he has in, in a tackle. I don't see stuff that what I see is fundamentals. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when a young player is coming through and they're getting moved on loan, the reason is is that they haven't fully developed certain fundamentals. Before Skeppy went to Norwich, I genuinely thought he didn't have the composure. I thought he rushed, and I also thought he was a little light. He had massive shoulders, and I was like, when is Skeppy gonna like body a guy? Then he went to Norwich and he, and he was doing it. And I was like, Skippy's got what you need now. So, but Saar, I think Saar has been playing at quite a high level. His loan spells and his teams that he's been playing at, he's been like quite like needed. And people have raved about just the, his mind and how he understands the game and how he plays from such a young age. So I, so what I see, the reason I think that he's going to have a bit of consistency is really I'm seeing fundamentals are strong with him. You know, and mm. and so yeah, I think it's a it. it there is some um, some credit due with Paratici signing him. I, I definitely think he was scout that that you know we can actually mm. say finally our scouting system really did one there, and Paratici got a great deal there. So yeah, I'm 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 excited. Obviously, it's not a great situation to be in only having three when you play two in the middle. Like anything could happen at any point, but yeah, I I I, I think he could fight for that eight top.